Hi, hello and welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build a smart fan controller like this one. Now, I know what you're thinking. I am saying a fan controller, but I'm showing you a light bulb here. This is just for demonstration, but trust me, you can use this to control the speed of your fan. And in fact, I'm going to show you how exactly it's being done with a ceiling fan at the end of this video. So this board over here can be used for two things. One, it can directly control the speed of the fan by switching the triac over here and the second functionality is this dht11 sensor which can be used to measure the temperature of the room and it will automatically set the fan speed based on your room temperature that's very cool right so in this video i'm going to show you how you can build this board and i'm also going to show you how the entire thing works so let's get started so now I have powered up the device. If you can see uh, the light bulb is slightly turned on. Now once it's powered on, you can take your mobile phone and get into the Wi-Fi section and you will find a new hotspot named fan speed controller. Just click on it, you will get connected to it. The password by default is 12345678, but you can change it if you're interested in that. And then open any browser of your choice. I'm gonna open Chrome and get into this IP address, which is 192.168.4.1. Once you get in that, you will see this page from where we can control our fa smart fan speed controller. So right now the brightness is set at 28. Let me go to all the way high. And as you can see, as soon as I increased it, we had a beep from the buzzer over here and the brightness of the bulb has also increased. Now let me go to somewhat around 23, 22 again. And as you can see, the brightness gradually decreases. Same thing, I can even do a 67% or 61% and accordingly the brightness or the speed of the fan will be controlled. Now another interesting feature here, as you can see the room temperature right now here, the AC is running so it's around 27.6 degrees celsius and over here you can set the minimum speed and the maximum speed for your fan based on the temperature for example i can set that the minimum speed that i need is at 20 degrees celsius so if the temperature goes below this the fan will turn off and the maximum temperature range would be around say 35 degrees celsius so when i do this so whenever the fan whenever the room temperature drops below 20 the fan will automatically turn off similarly uh, it will map the speed and increase the speed with by uh, till the temperature reaches 35 so at 35 degrees celsius the fan will be running at maximum speed so uh, this is just an example you can set whatever temperature you want and then then click on this button enable auto mode and once you say okay you will hear two beeps to see that the uh, to notify that the board is entered into auto mode and your fan speed will automatically be controlled so this is a quick demonstration and uh, next we will see how the circuit diagram for this board looks like and i will also show you the schematics as well as the code for this project so let's get into it so this is how the entire thing works and as you can see everything is neatly fabricated in a compact PCB so that it can also fit into this enclosure. So you will have your AC input here, your DHT11 and your output pins will be here. So everything will be packed neatly inside this enclosure. I'll also show you that at the end of this video and you can easily mount it in your living room or in your bedroom. So all of this is made possible using these amazing PCBs and that brings us to the sponsors for this video PCB way. PCB Way provides high quality PCB prototype and fabrication services. They are well equipped to handle standard and advanced PCB design and can also provide SMD stencil and PCB assembly services. They are known for their shorter lead time and quick customer response and also supports the maker community. So do consider giving them a try for your next PCB. So that being said, let's move forward with this video. We will see how the entire schematics for this thing looks like and I will also show you the code and the firmware which we have used to build this thing so let's move forward okay now we are looking at the complete schematics for this board let's start from the ac input side so this is the ac input 
side as you can possibly see we have the ac input we have a high link module which converts the 230 volt ac to 3.3 volt dc so let's look at the schematics as well we have the live and neutral getting into the high link module which gives us 3.3 volt to power the pic microcontroller the esp and everything here is powered with 3.3 volt and then we have the ground and then moving on we have the zero cross deduction section so over here on the back side you will find a full bridge rectifier which is shown here along with two resistors and then we have an optocoupler pc817 which you can see over here which is used for zero cross detection the zcd here indicates zero cross detection so whenever the ac waveform touches this touches zero we'll get a signal here which is then given to our esp8266 sorry which is then given to our pic microcontroller over here so we have two controllers here one is the esp8266 which you can see here and other is the pic microcontroller which you will find if you remove this esp8266 module so here you can see the pic microcontroller which is pic 12F675P. So uh, it is supposed to be a through hole component, but we had an SMD with us. So we have adjusted with what we had, but you can install a through hole component here as well. So the reason for using two microcontrollers is that one microcontroller will be busy with uh, doing that hotspot thing hosting the web server and everything while the other microcontroller is completely dedicated for zero cross deduction as well as to switch the waveform using the triac over here so basically how speed control or uh, brightness control works is that we will be chopping the ac waveform and reducing the output voltage and in this case it is very important to do it with zero cross deduction because when we are implementing it for fans like ceiling fans or table fans if zero cross detection is not implemented we will get vibrations or humming noise on the fan when it is being controlled so that is why we have used a dedicated pic microcontroller and have implemented zero cross detection so that the control of the fan is really really smooth and is very practical so moving on with the circuit diagram we have already covered till here so again the pic microcontroller operates at 3.3 volt and then which gets the signal from zero cross reduction circuit over here and then on the output side we have another optocoupler which you can see here the part number is MOC 3021 and then uh, which you can see over here and then we have the actual triac which is used for switching the ac waveform which you can see here and then we have a few other snubber circuits i'm not going to get into detail of how a snubber circuit works you can find that in the link at the description of this video then moving forward we have a speaker over here along with dht11 both of which is connected to esp8266 so you can find the dht11 over here and the buzzer over here so the buzzer is used for audio feedback so it will be uh, ideally mounted inside your ceiling fan so you won't know what's happening so uh, we we have given an audio feedback and then the dht11 is used to monitor the room temperature and control the speed accordingly so that is it as you can see it is very simple schematics there is nothing complicated here it's very easy for you to design it on your own now let's see what kind of firmware is uploaded to this ESP8266 uh, microcontroller and what functionality it does. Okay, now we are on the GitHub page of Circuit Digest under Smart Fan with Temperature Control. The link for this GitHub profile can be found at the link given in the description of this video along with complete code explanation. You can find the schematic here as well as the project code. If you get into it, you will find two files. One is HTML and the other is the actual Arduino INO file. So if you open the Arduino program, there is nothing again much complicated here. As you can see, we have just initiated all the libraries that we're going to use. And then we have declared the SSID and password for the hotspot, which we saw in the video fan speed controller with this password. And then we have some variables which can take in the temperature value, the value in which the fan was running. So another thing what we have implemented here is we have an EEPROM functionality 
property which will remember the last value from the slider as well as the minimum temperature and the maximum temperature set by the user so in the event of a power cut when the power comes back your fan will start running in the same speed in which it was doing earlier so yeah the program is again very complicated i'm not going to get into details of every single line here you can see the eeprom part which i told you and then we have the uh, wi-fi uh, soft access spot or uh, access point set which we saw in the video so yeah i'm not going to go into the details of this code because it has already explained and you can find that in the link given in the description we have a very good documentation explaining the code so now we know how the code looks like we know how the schematics work so the only next thing pending for us is to go ahead and fabricate the pcb and once your pc PCB design is ready. I will show you how you can fabricate it and get it delivered right to your doorstep using PCB way. So to do that, just get into their website pcbway.com and you will be taken to their home page, which would look something like this. Over here, you can proceed with signing in and then enter the dimensions for the PCB. In our case, let's say the dimension for the PCB is 50 mm cross 50 mm and we need five PCBs with two layer and a thickness of 1.6 mm. Just click on code now and you'll be taken to the next page where you can select few more specifications i'm not going to change anything here other than the color in our case it was a red color pcb but you can select any color you want and then just leave the other parameters to default what's important is on the right side you can see the shipping cost as well as the lead time for your pcb for example for this specification they are telling that the build time is three to four days and uh, let's say i'm shipping it to united states of america in that case my shipping fee would be 24.85 dollars so you can see the total cost which you have to pay over here which would be 29.85 you can then click save to cart and proceed with checkout so before that you also would have to upload the gerber file if you need the gerber file for this project again you can find it in the github profile it will be added or there will be a link at the description for this video so that's it this is how you can use pcb way to order your pcbs so after your order is placed you will receive your pcbs in a neatly packaged box like this one so let me show you the pcbs which i received for this project which you can see here let me zoom in a bit and you can take a look by yourself that the quality of the pcb is really really good the footprints are very clear the silk screen is very legit and even the holes wires everything was neatly made all i had to do it was just proceed with assembling it the end result kind of looks like this and once everything is done i just had to upload the code to my esp plug it in and then power it on and it works like a charm so that is it guys this is how the entire thing works as promised i will show you a video clip in which we have put this uh, project inside the enclosure which i showed you earlier and have tested it with a ceiling fan So that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.